Hi friends, it's Lauren Taylor. Thanks for joining me in my craft room today. I am excited to be hopping along over actually on Instagram for this hop, but with Twiddler's Nook for her spooktacular Halloween themed Instagram hops. As you know, I like to do Halloween inspiration on the last day of the month and Twiddler's Nook is doing, or Yes, she's doing these Instagram hops on every 31st from January until October. So not every month, but anytime it's the 31st. So I was really excited to participate and be asked to be a part of this awesome Instagram hop. So every 31st, um, again, from January to October, make sure you head over to my Instagram, which is linked down below to see the inspiration and also learn about the giveaway. Now, I am making a video to go along with this project because, like I said, I like to bring inspiration on the last day of the month. So for the projects that fall on a 31st, you'll also see how I use Twiddler's Nook's products on my cards. Like today, I have the really cute different embellishment mixes. So, well, there's I'm mixing them together, I guess you said you could say. So the first one I'm using is the Gone Batty Embellishment Mix, which are little clay bats. And I'm also using Perfect Pineapple Confetti Stars. So I'm blending those to make my own mix for my Halloween shaker card. I'm also using Twiddler's Nook's Stand Up Blending Brushes. And I have the magnetic little bottom so I can color code each of my brushes, which is so cool. But also because they're magnetic, they stick to the double wide platform base. Now she offers quite a few different platform bases. So check out her Etsy shop, which will also be linked down below. And I have the magnetic tray that I can use for uh, mixing my embellishments or pouring them in there if I want to get a better look and divvy up, you know, what I want to use as a mix or maybe I want to keep my dyes in there. It's a really, really handy tool. Um, so I use the blending brushes with dis uh, different Distress Oxides in Black Soot, Chip Sapphire, Dusty Concord, Forest Moss, and Picked raspberry. I use some mint tape to create a mask. So I have a difference between my setting sun skyline and my darker green um, ground. And the dyes that I'm using are from Miss Ink Stamps. This is the Punny Farm frame die. So I use the stitched A2 rectangle to cut out my mixed media paper to do my ink blending. And then I use the scallop frame out of some black sparkly cardstock, and that will be my shaker frame. And I wanted to create a grassy ground on the bottom of my shaker because my cute little critters from Hello Bluebird are going to be walking along the ground. So I use some kind of olive green cardstock from the Boho Slimline Paper Pad. And I trimmed it first with the Slimline Scenery Dyes from Heffy Doodle. And now I'm going to just use a pen to mark where I need to trim the green down to fit in the same area as my black frame. So I just use a pen to make two little marks and I'm using my paper trimmer to trim it down so I get some nice straight lines, but I definitely could have just used scissors since we aren't going to see those nice straight lines anyway. Um, and then I have a piece of acetate. I was trying to use my grid mat to figure out what I needed to trim my acetate to, but I just grabbed my T-ruler instead. And I'm going to cut a piece of acetate that measures four and a half by three and a quarter. And I will then get out my adhesives to start putting together the shaker. So once I have all my layers, the two adhesives I'm going to use are a 1 8 of an inch um, adhesive roll and a quarter inch adhesive roll. So I'm going to start with the 1 8 of an inch and add four, um, add it all on four sides. So just on the outside of that inner part of the frame, I'll go ahead and add all four. And then I'm gonna peel up just the bottom half to be able to attach my green grass. So I will line that up to the bottom of the opening and then uh, make sure it's pressed down on that adhesive and it still looks good on my background. Then I'll grab the quarter inch and I'm going to do two rows of this behind the grass so that way it just sticks to my acetate sheet really well. 
and I pulled off all the release paper and now I can attach the acetate. So this is gonna be the cover of my shaker window and then the ink blended background is the background or the back of my shaker window. To create the well, I'm going to use my Heffy Doodle foam adhesive. I just am doing four stri strips along all four sides again. And once I get all four there, I make sure that they're butted up against each other so there's no areas to, you know, lose any embellishments. And then I pulled up all the release paper and now I'm going to make my shaker mix. So again, I'm using from Twiddler's Nook the Perfect Pineapple Confetti Stars and the Gone Batty Embellishment Mix to create a fun, very kind of Halloween, but yet very cute shaker mix. So I placed it onto the ink blended background, made sure that it was more in the center so I can add my frame and really press to make sure that adhesive sticks and keeps my shaker window together. So with that, I'll go ahead and put my dies and my ink blending tools away because the background of my card is done and I can start working on my cute little critters. I'm using the stamp set from Hello Bluebird called Little Haunters and I also have the coordinating dies. So I'll go ahead and I'm gonna pick just three of the cute critters. It was hard to narrow down which ones I wanted to do, um, but I also stamped one of the jack-o'-lanterns. I stamped them twice using my Sassy Club Onyx Black ink pad and my Misty so I can have a nice clean line, you know, very crisp image on my alcohol marker friendly cardstock and I'm using my Ohuhu Honolulu markers. I prefer the B as there's a brush and a nib, but you know, use whatever you have on hand as your favorite coloring medium. So I'll quickly go through the color combinations. For orange, I'm using Y10 and Y4, and that will be the um, pumpkins, some of the candy baskets, lots of orange. And for the yellow inside of my pumpkin, I wanted it to look like it was glowing with a fire. And that color combination was Y2, Y180, and Y1. Then for the green details on the pumpkins, it was G300 and GY42. I have a few little purple details and that was V070 and V160. Now moving on to the critters for my little bunny, I'm using E280 as the darker tone. Um, but then I realized that I think that actually might be better as a lighter tone. So I brought in E380 to then go over what I'd already colored and then brought back out the E280 to fully color in my rabbit. I do my best to make sure there's a nice blend and then I'll bring in a pink color to color in the ears, nose, and cheeks, which was E030. And this is the same color I'll use for all three critters to color in their ears and cheeks. For adding in the black for the hat, I actually am using dark gray instead of black. So the darker color is CG208 and the lighter color is CG207. I decided to jump over to my adorable little hedgehog because he's dressed like a mummy and I'm going to use yellow gray. So starting with YG080, then YG040, and then I actually bring in warm gray 0 0.5 because to me it's a bit on the more yellowier side so that will be my mummy and then the lighter part of the hedgehog I have two colors I'm doing E220 to be the darker color and E160 to be the lighter and um, the more the prickly part of my hedgehog is back is E130 as the darker tone and E120 as the lighter tone and again bringing in that same kind of peachy pink color for the ears and cheeks. Now moving back to my fox, he ends up being a little darker than planned, but the lighter fur is E280 and WG0.5 to color in, again, the top of the tail, the bottom of his face, and stomach. And then I brought in E080 to be the darker for the more reddishy orange color of the fox. And then the secondary color, I brought in E060, but it's a little darker than I was imagining, so it's okay. It's still really cute. I like the color combo, uh, and they are trick-or-treating at night, so he would be kind of a darker color um, based on the lighting, but I'm still working to figure out what would be a better combination for him in the future. 
I went ahead and used the coordinating dies to cut all of the images out. I will use a white gel pen later on in the card. I'm going to remember to do it as I'm gluing them to my card. Um, but I did use a jelly roll size 10 to add some highlights as well. So I'm going to start with adding my little jack-o-lantern. I'm going to tuck it in between the grass and the acetate and kind of have it lean out to the left of the frame. And I will have my fox lean out a little bit to the right of the frame just so it's, you know, I'm capturing a scene in this picture frame of my shaker window, but it also goes past the scene as well. After I have my fox glued down, I'll add my sweet little rabbit and then finally my hedgehog. I have them a little bit more to the right and kind of in height order so that way I can add my sentiment to the top left. So here you can see as I've been gluing down my images I'm using my white gel pen so I'll just add a few highlights to my cute little mummy hedgehog before moving on to my sentiment. I'm grabbing one of the sentiment stamps from the Little Haunter stamp set and the Everyday Sentiment banners from Lawn Fawn. I'm grabbing the smallest one and die cut it from black cardstock. I'm going to emboss my sentiment in white, so I'll go ahead and use my little distress uh, tool from Rabbit Hole Designs. It has like an anti-static powder in it to help keep my embossing powder just where I want it, which is the stamped sentiment. And I'm using my Brutus Monroe embossing ink in clear with a clear block to uh, stamp it down, which I know is kind of daring. Usually I'm a big proponent of using my Misty even when I am embossing because if I don't get it perfectly, you know, inked up correctly, it's a pain to have to stamp it again, but I, I did pretty well, I'm very happy. And once I clean up my embossing powder and my heat gun is warmed up, I melted down that embossing powder. It's basically little particles of plastic. And once it had cooled down and hardened, I use a little Swiffer cloth to wipe off the excess anti-static powder. And you can read the adorable You Are Spooktacular sentiment. I'm gonna tuck this in underneath the frame and adhere it to the acetate. So I went ahead and just trimmed off what I wouldn't need from the banner. I added my adhesive and now I'm going to attach it to the card. Now I definitely could have just used a piece of, of adhesive roll instead of like a double-sided sticky tape instead of liquid adhesive. It takes a little time for it to dry, but that's okay. I have my card base, so let's go ahead and attach my card front to my card base with some super sturdy sticky uh, glue. This is a Scotch adhesive runner, and then I am adding my card front. And that will finish off my first project for the Twiddler's Nook Spooktacular Instagram Hop. Make sure you let me know in the comments if you hopped along with all of the different creators. Again, you can find a link to my Instagram down below so you can hop along with us and be entered to win a prize. But I do hope you enjoyed this month's Halloween on the Last project. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll click like, and if you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe and come back. As always, you can find everything I use down below in the description box. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye.